Okay. Welcome to White Mountain. I see a different picture up there, Leo. <laughs> yes. Welcome to White Mountain. I will explain what it is. My name is Frank Heckman, and these are all the people are involved in it so far. Um, I'm the founder of the Embassy of the Earth. The Embassy of the Earth is a foundation, a foundation that works to convene people in conflict situations or in crisis or urgent matters, always when the question is rather complex and is not a single answer. So the Embassy has been a platform like this for many, many years and would bring people together in my own country, Holland, on the future of our Delta, or in America, the future of the Colorado River in the state of Colorado, all the liberal rights and all these people that were meeting each other in court, and resolving it through a social platform where people convene and commit to um, work out a solution towards the future, a future that they can live with. Uh, White Mountain, how did it come about? Well, the Embassy of the Earth was working in India with the Dawn Foundation on a similar landscape in Tamil Nadu, South India. And we got a call for urgency from the Ambusei part of this country, region of the country, with a call for help. Severe droughts, livestock dying at an alarming rate. And in my Facebook encounter, I told them of a project going on in Tanzania, where a friend of ours, who's done 30 years of work in Peru, was working on his dream, working in Africa, in his third year in Tanzania. They came and looked, and they saw what was happening in a similar difficult challenging landscape, livelihood, and restoring the landscape. And they said, yes, especially the young people, this is what we want. And they went back to the homelands, close to National Park, Ambosili National Park, Ogolulu Range, and they spoke to their elders and to the chairman of the villages. And they said, yes, we need to do something. The way we're going now is not the right way. And that was the beginning of working for the embassy in Africa, in Kenya, and namely Amboseli. Very shortly thereafter, I flew in with the name itself from Pachamama Rami, Greening Africa. They're sitting over here. They will explain to you what they're doing there. And we looked and we surveyed the landscape and we visited the Bomas and we agreed together that we wanted to go and move forward. Why White Mountain? White Mountain, or Donyo Iborg, the Maasai say, that's how they call Mount Kilimanjaro. And Mount Kilimanjaro has a huge landscape region of ecosystems and watersheds. And that landscape, when we traveled and when I researched and spoke to different parties, is also in a severe condition, dwindling desertification, degradation over many, many years. And lots of people are taking and using that same landscape, not only the Maasai, but conservation people, tourist industry, farmers, many, many people have in the, come into that land and over the last 30 years, of course, the population of Kenya has grown too. So this is the onset of White Mountain. White Mountain was conceptualized because it's not just a group of villages, but we need to do a concerted effort in the entire region to come together with all these pieces of the puzzle and decide whether we have common ground and move forward and make a, a collaborative restoration effort. And the way the embassy works is that it's like uh, a twofold gaze being able to see a dewdrop on the blade of grass around Kilimanjaro in the distance at the same time. So on a macro level, 
we organize on a local level, we begin to work. And that's where Pachamama Rami, uh, Greening Africa, is our partner because they're very experienced in it and we're about to start. And that's why in India, the Dawn Foundation is a very experienced partner and they are taking care of the execution in all the villages there. Villages have started almost a year ago and are ahead. So I will now hand over the microphone to, oh no, Leo, we will have an opening ceremony first. Uh, can I give Solomon the microphone, please? Wageni ambayo yuko hapa walikuwa mabibi na mabwana habari yenu kwa majina unaidua Solomon M. Lomba tuna mimi ni mkenya tuna toka Kajado County Sub County Loitokto Location Ambuseli Na tunakilisha Oldonyi Bor Kilimanjaro Wera mayo Tunataka tuombe Mwenyesu mungu kwa sababu ilipo kwanda kwa mkutano leo sijawana wale ambayo naomba mungu. Na tunaomba tu kwa luga yetu tunasai. Na ikiomba tunaomba nyinyi wote tusumame. Na Asante. Alayroria nilai lo sufati kinjo yana shei nemere na baate ndiara kia na olong. Ndivu modu yok to tonku torna basha basha. Kumogu lemi ngwa lo ngwa ngwa pia bo na kumogu lo ngwa kenya. Amon alayroria nilai lo sufati bilai rabaya wedi ni ngwa. Nebuongare nyanga sakete nebaya. Aisha na sheite ndira gildonas. Wadu rumo yoga no longa ngaya yosufati. Wadu ninyere ndira ke frank. Wadu nyanga imi rabau yoke neitu ekata ke bau. Naka yuna amone ngaya yosufati mera wadu na bene nila iputu. Nila isho momita doko ya altunganak. Amonde ndera ke Kenya vedu mosodwa. Amayola de ne meti osodwa anata migiti ene wei. Amonde osodwa vedu ngin kwa pi wolo oro ono olo ibor. Ahada sebarra angaya ya do yana idi meyo. Naka amonde nana na kote na reyeso na amonde aisha na she. Semeni amen. Aa. Adorashe. Asho pagi nonda ipo kino yoto. Tendera gamba unoroing. Hayola doko mogulo ingwa ngwe piene lebeken lemerkenya. Kaka doko nda karibu Kenya. Ayo la dore piyoru angopo na dio sotoa. Ayo la dore peta baurua no sotoa dia amora angopo na ara neme pui. Because of the peace that we have, Sidi. No. Thank you very much, Bwana Parasina. Thank you very much. He said that he acknowledges that. You've come to Kenya because of the peace that exists in the country. And uh, because of that, because we are coming, the God will also bless you all. 
he also recognizes that this is a global forum, is a global meeting. Na gawore peti ki na nda munot ondo ata sidan na ita pa ashipe rumi elengwa nabo. And uh, the interest of having this forum is uh, to bring together good ideas to come and share so that we can get a one unified direction. Nati chepe amu aradua geni na deti osotua neti endogi na jage balas janda edi siro donga nak. And uh, him personally is very happy because uh, he's seen and witnessed that uh, there's a lot of uh, unanimity and peace in this forum. And more importantly, the balance, uh, gen the gender balance that uh, he can observe from uh, looking at the participants. He's very happy to see women leading in uh, uh, forums and meetings. Because he believes that there is nothing important more than a woman. Uh, he acknowledges that uh, women are as equal as men. And he urges all of us to be together from any corner of the world that you come from and to acknowledge women as important and as equal players in all our undertakings. But he was like deep, and as he concludes, Kiti yoge nete ndiaragi oldo nyibor. We are here, or they are here, because of uh, uh, the White Mountain. Now, what a big deal! Now, Allah shalang with the Frank, and uh, why they have made it to this place is because of uh, uh, our brother Frank. Oya uwa liki yoge ndi kungo bega ndo abere ngo niki unirike niki ingela rinyongo merodi we na apa. Uh, who came to partner with us and uh, showed us how we can restore our land through planting of trees to ensure that it comes back to the status that it was there before. And uh, he doesn't know your areas or where you come from, but he wants to inform you that uh, the landscape is speaking about experience severe drought for seven good years. But he, he believes that maybe you've heard about it, and um, he has also seen uh, governments trying to give people relief food. But once uh, the coming in of Frank, and he came uh, during that drought uh, period, while we were giving um, a supplement fodder to, to our uh, livestock, and it's the same is given again to human beings uh, uh, supplement food. Uh, he advises and urges the, the community that uh, let's restore this landscape, let's uh, plant trees because once we plant trees and restore landscape, we'll get back our uh, the rains. Frank. And you would like to urge everybody here to uh, partner with Frank and uh, give more effort to Frank's um, uh, initiative. And if you will be able to give him money, uh, please, if you can't give him money, pray for him. Because if you pray for him, he has the uh, knowledge and the capacity to implement this initiative. And he still won't repeat that yeah. he, we, they, they made it to this forum because of him. And all the people you see here are from Amboseli. Others from Tanzania. Green Africa. Uh, from a project known as the Green Africa. And he says that it's very happy and he says he wants to conclude by uh, telling everybody thank you and to also inform you that uh, from where he comes from is a peacemaker and that's how they recognize him back uh, in the village. And he wants to invite all of you to Amboseli and he's sure that you'll find him there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah please get seated. Thank you.
Thank you, General B. Solomon. Thank you. We, we should we hear a song? Somebody want to sing? Opening song? Yeah. Sing? Yo? Yeah. Okay, now we can really start. Thank you. Asante. Okay. Uh, I'd like to give the mic to the on the list. Uh, I honored partner in the Embassy of the Earth, and he will give you some content. Can you push the slides for me? So, for, welcome everybody. My name is Leo van der Vlist. I'm with uh, Frank on the Embassy of the Earth projects. Um, I'm going to tell you in three slides a little bit about the main features, uh, value and vision of the White Mountain project. Um, so, if you can push the slides further. Uh, this is where we are uh, aiming to work. Uh, Delegation will talk about the first uh, successful test projects in four villages in Tanzania. And the ambition is to scale up 70 villages in Tanzania with um, investors. And uh, based on the experiences of the first uh, successful projects, it's possible to have investors interested in this. Then in Kenya, we uh, are aiming for a first uh, test project. We hope to start uh, in one or two months area and um, if that's a successful project then we want to scale up in Kenya as well and uh, besides this we are reaching out to many other partners there's one other organization here working in the same area just dig it and uh, there's we met many more organizations here at the global landscape forum working in this area and we are reaching out to everyone because we need a lot of partners to achieve a real white mountain that has snow and rainfall and uh, healthy people. So, Frank, please. Vision, values and viability, that's all I want to share about the project. So, the vision, on the next slide, is community-led, which means that the communities design the project, they implement the project, monitor the project, and they adapt to the project. It's completely in their hands. And all around it is creating support as they need it. The other feature is that it's a holistic project. So we're looking at the whole system, and the whole system determines the smaller parts. The whole determines the, the parts. Um, the way we do this is that we look at the landscape level and all the ecological features in it. We also look at the social landscape. So we look at all the main stakeholders that have an impact on this uh, landscape. So we look at wildlife organizations, nature organizations, community organizations, governmental institutions, other NGOs, financial institutions. And we go reach out to all of them to share the vision of healthy, viable uh, Mount, Mount Kilimanjaro landscape. Uh, very important is to look at the livelihood because the people have to do it and they have to make a living. So the interventions of Pachamamarami very much focus on the livelihood of the people, but at the same time uh, also enhance the economy. 
And then uh, we look at landscape level because if we have an impact on the ecology and the weather patterns, we have to look at a large scale intervention. Next slide. Uh, these are the re returns we are expecting once the project is implemented. And again, it starts with the social return, the social values. Um, as they are improved livelihood, the community will become more empowered and viable. And um, so that's the first thing, the social value. Ecological value, the landscape will be uh, re restored and regenerated. Spiritual value, and that because if you're healing the earth, you are healing yourself. And that lifts up. And then from all of this comes economic value. When the cows can be fed from the fodder, the, the fruits can be eaten by the people, and the timber can be sold longer term on the market. Next slide. So this is about viability. What is needed to achieve all the outputs that I just mentioned? Um, this starts with the community. The community delivers the most important input. They have the land, they have the labor, they have a lot of traditional knowledge. So all of that is what they bring to the table. And then grants for the first test projects because that's where you have all the risks involved that you have to find out how to deal with the risks. So that's where grant money comes in. And from the grant money, we can move to impact investors. Why impact? These are investors that will settle for a lower interest rate, will be um, engaging for a longer term that's needed because trees take time to grow. And also they will accept more risks uh, commercial investors. So once we have the impact investors on board, we can scale up, and then when time flows, the revenue will flow to the community, and then the community can put back the investment. It can also create their own community bank, because there will be a surplus of revenue. So what we envision at the end is that the grants and the investors will not be needed, but just the banking can continue the project in the longer term. So that's about what I want to say. Frank, can you show the next slide? Frank, can you show me the next slide? So the upper picture is what Ambusek looked like when Frank was there. And the picture below is where the people in Tanzania were working at the same time. So the result is quite magnificent. And quote from the uh, peace uh, chairperson that you just heard. Next slide. White Mountain is the hope for the whole country and the answer to changing the climate. So that's what keeps us going. Thank you very much. Thank you, Leo. Well done. In such a short time, I even understand it now. Very good. Now, uh, uh, just to give you some insight uh, how it's working, you saw the last slide where you see the cracked earth. It's a picture I took last uh, October when I was in, uh, in the area of... Uh, and the other picture is really uh, two weeks later when I was visiting uh, Pachamama Rami or Greening Africa in Mugugu, Tanzania. And uh, what you saw there is just the, the harvest of two years of growing uh, fodder tree. I would like to invite uh, Ramadani Yume and Jackson Mugabwe to come and present uh, what they're doing in Tanzania and what they will be assisting us in doing with the people in Amboseli. Good evening. Uh, his name is Jackson Migona. I 
Habari za jioni. Good evening everyone. Mimi kwa majina naitwa Jackson Igona. His name is Jackson Nigona. Nimetokea Tanzania. He's from Tanzania. Mko wa Manyara. Uh, province. Manyara Manyara province, right? Yeah. So he is not very also uh, for Kenyans we have a small problem. But I'll manage it. <laughs> <laughs> Nimetokea mko wa Manyara na kata ya Mwada kijiji Sangaiwe. Yeah from the district Mwada. Mwada vile. Kijiji Sangaiwe vile. And the village Sanga Sangarini. Ndio. Wo wa tunajishughulisha na mambo ya Pachamama Remi ya kutunza mazingira. Yeah he's involved in um, uh, environmental uh, conservation and management labda niende moja kwa moja kwenye utekelezaji wa mradi wa Green Africa so is uh, he goes just direct to the operations that he does at uh, Green Africa kama inavyoonekana kwenye picha like you can see from the slides pembeni kabisa mkono wa kushoto ni rais wa pacha pa Remi na director wa Green Africa Yeah, from the extreme left is the president of uh, Pachacha Mama Remi the, the, the that's the, the name of the initiative and then he, next to him is the director Pembeni yao walioingia Tanzania walichagua uongozi kama unavyoonekana pale And the rest uh, you can see on the right hand side is um, the leadership that was um, uh, elected by community members from from where the project is operating Hiyo ni hatua ya kwanza hatua ya pili That is the first step so next step next slide Hizo ni mbinu za pacha mama Rem kwa ajili ya kuendeleza mradi kama inavyoonekana hapo kwenye picha And those are the strategies of uh, or the guiding principles of uh, the project uh, as you can see from the slides Ndio so game is Hayo ni malengo ya mradi wa pacha mama Rem uh, the goals of uh, the uh, project kuondoa maskini kwa kutumia nyanja za tatu kuu. Um is poverty uh, eradication using three uh, main uh, strategies. Nyanja ya kwanza kupanda ku, kubarisha mazingira kwa kupanda miti. First strategy is to improve the uh, environmental condition uh, by planting trees or growing trees. Nyanja ya tatu kuboresha afya ya jamii kwa ujumla. And the second uh, strategy is to improve the health of the community in totality. Nyanja ya tatu ni mbinu mbadala za jamii kujipatia kipato. Uh, the third strategy is alternative uh, uh, livelihood uh, mechanisms for the, the community. Ndio. Yaani mabadiliko ya mabadilish kubadilishana fikira kwa kuondoa umaskini. Uh, uh, this is a uh, uh, knowledge sharing focused on uh, eradicating uh, poverty kwenye picha pa anaonyesha kabla ya Green Africa kuingia Tanzania na baada ya kuingilia Tanzania mafanikio yalionekana uh, from the picture you can see the arrow on the left uh, is before Green Africa started doing its initiative in Tanzania but now on the other side of uh, where you can see beautiful girls is after uh, Green Africa started doing the initiatives kabla sorry okay kabla ya Green Africa kuingia Tanzania watoto walikuwa wanakula matunda ambayo yaeleweki kama inavyoonekana pale kwenye picha uh, maisha ya awali ni tofauti ya sasa uh, before Green Africa you see the kids were feeding on uh, some sort of fruits which you also say they didn't understand quite well and the, the, the uh, I mean the health condition of the, of the kids were not very good as opposed to after Green Africa you see uh, the health is improved they look more bright and more beautiful na maji alikuwa ya shida na watu kama water was a serious problem and also as you can see from the photo there was a lot of uh, charcoal burning uh, like i think the lady is maybe waiting for a customer to buy charcoal kiwango cha ushiriki katika mradi wa vilima vitatu sarame sangaiwa na mwada uh, this shows the statistics of involvement between um, three entities that is sarame sangwai sangaiwe and mwada jumla ya kazi zilizoandikishwa ni kaya 
ishirini elfu mbili sitina tatu elfu sitini elfu nusuarasina tisa elfu na kaya zilizo fanikiwa kuendelea ni ni elfu mbili kumina tatu elfu nusuarasina mbili as you can see uh, at the uh, bottom um, of, of the table um, the number shows uh, the villages that were able to register to be involved in this pro project were 2,639 but those who actually that they were able to get them involved uh, were 2,132 Uzalishaji wa miche ya kupanda kwanzea mwaka 1217 na 1218 jumla ya miche ni miche Milioni nane, ishiruna sita, elfu na sitina sita. Between the year of 2017 and 2018, they were able to uh, have a tree nursery uh, uh, with a tree or tree seedlings number of um, 800,262. Kwa hiyo picha po kuna wanekana kuna bengi ya malisho. Uh, from this photo, he is showing you a uh, folder bank. Yeni bazi ya mbegu ambayo tulumepeo tumeotesha kwa jili ya malisho, kuna grisidia, malifa alfa, na lusina. These were some of the seedlings that were given with an intention to provide uh, fodder for the, the livestock. And um, there are, I think, three species of, um, of the seedlings or the, of the fodder crops that they were given by Green. Na tayari tumesha otesha hekta sabina saba elf. And already they have been able to uh, plant on uh, 77,000 hectares of land. Na hapa kwenye picho inaonekana kama tulivu otesha miti ya malisho kwa jile kuchunga ngombe. And uh, from the photo you can see that they, they are planted um, uh, trees that are intended to provide fodder for their livestock. Banda, yani mwanzoni tulikuwa tunafuga walela kwa hiyo baada ya pacha mama Remen kuja Tanzania sasa hivi tunafungia kwenye mabanda kama inavyoonekana kwenye picha. Uh, you can see now they, they can practice zero grazing because of the availability of the fodder that uh, they uh, planted for themselves. Hapo ni upandishaji wa ngombe kufuata mbegu ya kisasa kutoka Peru pacha mama Remen walitoletea mbegu za kisasa kwa ajili ya kupandikisha ngombe wetu. Uh, they received also improved uh, breed so that they can improve their, their livestock. As he says, uh, the breed came from Peru. And as you can see, uh, the lady on the photo is uh, actually the owner of, of uh, uh, the, the cow inside the shell and the, the other guy involved there um, with uh, uh, like a lab coat is, uh, and gum boots is a doctor who is actually giving the service. I think AI services or something. Hapena vwonekana ni mafanikio ya nilengu la mbradi kubada ya kufanikio kupanda matunda kami ina vwonekana kuna machungwa, kuna malimao, kuna mapasheni na kuna mapapai. What he is showing there is the outcome of the project or the intention of the project where is to uh, the seeds that were given for fruits, as you can see, there are uh, lemons, there are um, all sorts of uh, uh, fruits that can be consumed by the community. Uh, the photos uh, that you see, like uh, the extreme uh, uh, right of the upper side is, uh, I think, women going for water for, from a uh, uh, distance and children. But now you see the involvement of the project is that uh, they have been able to drill water and now they can get the water closer to the homestead as opposed to before where they had to walk for distance. Kwa jili, yani saivi tutumii vi, nani dawa ya kiza madukani, saivi tunasindika dawa yenyewe, baada ya kufundisho na pacha maremi, tunasindika dawa yenyewe na kupike kwenye mboga mboga na miti ili wasipati wadudu wa sishambulia miti. This is a training on organic agricultural inputs, fertilizers, 
uh, before they used to buy the inorganic one, the chemicals from um, agrovets. But now, after the involvement of the project, they have been able to use um, uh, biodegradable material and um, uh, uh, crop residues uh, to be able to make their own uh, inorganic fertilizer to use on their farms for the production of vegetables and fruits. Afrika wana kana ni wakuli mambali mbali tumbelewa katika mafunzo. Apo unaurano kuna ipicha tumepelekwa iringa tumependekwa mtamoja kule kule manyara unasemekana kwa njina la kichameda kwa ajili ya kujifunza na kubalisha na mawazo na watu mbali mbali. Uh, this photo shows um, uh, farmers training whereby the farmers are, are trained and taken to different localities for um, uh, exchange visits from uh, different uh, villages to others so that they can share and uh, uh, try to replicate uh, issues or initiatives that has worked on one area to, to, to the other landscape. Apoena Vorekana ni wanafunzo ya chukikuwa metembelea kuona maendeleo wanafunyana pachoma maremi na wawa jifunza zaidi. From there is uh, those are university students who uh, visited uh, the, the project so as to learn from actually what the farmers are doing in the field. Apoena Vorekana ni picha ni kwa jeli tumefundishwa jinsi ya kuboresha nyumba kwa hiyo unavonekana hapa kuna picha kuna kuna mahali ameandika malengo ya sasa na malengo ya baadaye kwa hiyo lazima upange mpangilio chumba cha baba chumba cha mtoto wa kiume na chumba cha mtoto wa kike na chumba cha mgeni uh, this shows um, um, a training that they have gone through in terms of uh, how to um, organize your house in, in, in to, to have a harmonious uh, arrangement of, of the rooms in the house uh, so as you can accommodate your family with utmost respect and also you have uh, a way to accommodate your visitors. Apapana vonekana ni mitazamo ya wananchi kubadilika. Ni hapo unavoiona pale kwenye yule mama pale juu ni ile ni kabati ya vyombo vya asili tulio pewa mbinu za kutengeneza pachama maremi wapo chini ni jiko la kutoa moshi nje na linabana matumizi ya kuni wala liachi moshi ndani uh, as you can see this is training on how to organize yourself in the house like um, the, the lady on the uh, top left was was uh, uh, trained how to make um, um, uh, 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 like um, shells so that she can put her uh, uh, cutleries and things uh, that she uses in the kitchen and the bottom right is um, a modern kitchen that the project has been able to train them on how to to develop them that doesn't uh, it uses firewood but uh, all the smokes goes outside so there is no smoke within the kitchen hii ni kutunza to hii pajama marami wametutunza wametufundisha kutunza tamaduni zetu kwa kama unavyoona pale kwenye picha kuna picha ya barabai kuna picha ya wanyaturu kuna picha ya mbugwe um, also, the projects are stopped in the cultural values of, of the, the community, whereby they, they, they take advantage of the culture of the local people and also to ensure that uh, they don't lose it and there is uh, some exchange. As you can see, those are different um, cultural practices from different uh, communities within the landscape. Marekebisho ya nyumba, kuchimba visima, kuotesha miti, basi huwa kuna majaji wanapita, wakisha pita, wanaandika pointi, ulamba mpata pointi za juu, anatunukia za wadi yake kila baada ya mizi sita. And to ensure that uh, the project is, uh, there is uptake and implementation, the, the project is designed in such a way that there are judges who go around um, all the initiatives, and uh, it's like a competition. The one who has done best, uh, is uh, given a reward, like you can see, those are, I think, uh, accolades given to, to a group that has performed very well in every six months. Malengo ambradi ya wagrini Afrika kwa mwaka elfumbili kumna nane elfumbili kumna tisa wanampango kuotesha miti milioni moja na lakitatu kwa jilia kuondoa jangu. They also have a strategic plan that runs from uh, May 2018 to February of 2019. And the first goal of the study plan is uh, to, to plant trees so as to um, eradicate uh, poverty and hunger. Next. Kabla ya 
na Maremi kuja Tanzania tulikuwa na fuga ufugaji yolela kama inavyoonekana pale kwenye picha um, before the coming in of the project as you can see uh, he says that uh, the practices in terms of uh, livestock keeping and pastoralism was just uh, not organized and um, he believes that uh, this photo or before the project then they were just doing it because uh, you have to but it was not organized in any way kabla ya pacha maremi kuja unaona utafiti waliofanya wakakundua hata kuna uhaba wa majani kama unavyoona pale mr turibio akimsaidia yule ngombe kwa ajili ya uhaba lakini baadaye wameleta malisho sasa hivi ngombe yetu anaboreka um he also says that um, the project just to start uh, uh, uh without any information this picture shows a scoping like a scoping study that um uh, uh they are doing to ascertain actually what initiative they need to bring so as to improve the the livelihood as you can see that cow is quite emaciated and now this was just during the scoping uh, study kafana wana kwenye picha ni nyumba za kabla ya green africa kuingia tanzania tulikuwa na maisha kama yale uh also in terms of uh, uh, the housing and settlements before they are coming in of the project on the landscape this is how the community used to live these were the houses that they used to have then hizo ni mbinu za pacha mamaremi kwa ajili ya kukuza maendeleo ya vijiji usika vinne ndani ya Tanzania um you can see that uh, they also have uh, an uh, uh, to have themselves be part of the global goals so so that also what they are doing the initiatives are leading towards um, achieving some of the goals that have been set uh, globally hiyo ni timu nzima ya Green Africa Tanzania hao ndio wanaoshirikiana Green Africa pamoja na uongozi wa kijiji hii ni kazi ya kujitolea wanaolipwa ni baadhi tu Green Africa hawalipi hela wao wanaangalia mtu anayejitolea ndio wanao mtunukiza wadi uh, This is one part of the team that's working on the project of Green Africa with our uh, involvement of uh, village elders and, and the community and you also uh, want to inform you that uh, uh, Green Africa doesn't pay everybody um, it works more on the basis of voluntary um, uh, uh, initiative so most of them are not paid they just volunteer to ensure that um, they participate in bettering their community na fundio ndio mwisho wa yeah that's a lot of Tanzania kwa hiyo anataka kuja kujione aje Tanzania aje kujione mambo mazuri zaidi na haya aliyoona hapo asante sana and he also says that this is just a snapshot of what they are doing but uh, there is more uh, in the field and in the community uh, landscape so if you happen to visit Tanzania or you wish to know more about the project you are welcome to, to to the landscape and you will find them and they will take you through thank you thank you very much and um, before we switch on i have to honor also mr toribio Rako, who is from Peru and who has been the director of this project and it's due to his efforts that all these things get done and what you are seeing maybe you look at something and say okay this is what I see but it was from the same bare land that you see in Amboseli when they started not even three years ago this is a project that the first one is in third year and the second one is in the second year. It's quite amazing what they pulled off because you were looking at desert when they came. Now I would like to give the microphone to Janice and Kjartan Muturi from Inchula Village, Ogulului, Amboseli. She will talk about the challenges of Amboseli. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Frank. Uh, I'm going to speak about the challenges facing Amseli. Uh, okay, as a result of the achievement from Tanzania, now we have challenges facing Amseli. Okay, that is where I live, Amboseli, Olalashi Group Ranch. I live next to Na Amboseli National Park. And we got a lot of challenges. I'm going to tell you. The first challenge is climate change. 
as you know, in the world, what? The, we're facing that. And all over the planet, the weather patterns are shifting, and drought and famine are almost in everywhere. And we live with the floods and drought. We're also facing that in Amboseli very much. And the second challenge is, okay, traditional and mad, oh, conflicts between human life and animals. As I say earlier, we live in Amboseli and we are bordered by a national park. And many cases, uh, people are killed by elephant and destruction of the land. So there is that conflict between the people and animals. And the second, the third ch challenge is the conflict between livestock and wildlife. We have lions there, cheetah, hyena, and every now and then there is that. Um, okay, they kill the animals like cows, goats, and sheep, and there's that conflict between livestock and wild animals. The other challenge is mushrooming of the hotel. Okay, there are a lot of tourism coming to visit Amseli, and in that case, people came to invest there and build hotel. That leads to destruction of the land, cutting of trees to have spaces for building their hotel. This is another major challenge we are facing in Amboseli. The other challenge is poor, transport, poor roads and networking. Okay, I guess they say that in, when there is a park, the mold roads are not supposed to be there, so we are facing that so much. The roads are very poor and network is very low. In fact, if you go there, the network is not good, so that's another challenge you're facing. And we are there as indigenous people, that's the, another challenge we're facing. And the modern development that has come, now like boys, they are going to school. And in our culture, we have something called the Moran. And as a boy, you have to pass the stages. And now because of going to school, you miss some stages and when dealing with education. So a bit culture is, we are losing our culture in a bit way. And the other challenge is overpopulation for both animals and people. For instance, the Amboseli National Park only holds like 800 elephant, but as we speak, we have like 2,600 elephant, which lead to them to come to our villages and destroy the land. And at the same time, people are many, so we have that overpopulation there. And the, that, the other one is... I'm being up done. Thank you. Thank you, Janice. Very good, very good. Let me get my glasses so I can see. I think we we are now speaking with uh, Mr. Joseph Sankale, also Maasai leader from Ogoluluwi Ranch, Amboseli, Kenya. And he will speak about the uh, uh, human wildlife dynamics. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, I salute you all. I just want to uh, take you a brief uh, uh, between, uh, conflict between human and wildlife in Amboseli National Park, that is in Kajado County. And uh, uh, I just want to define uh, the, the definition of human and wildlife conflict. Uh, human and wildlife conflict can be defined as any interaction between human and wildlife that results in negative impact on human, social, economic, culture, and, uh, and the conservation of wildlife 
population in an environment. And then we have a, a conceptual uh, framework. We have independent variable, we have dependent variable. And uh, if we want to deal with these uh, challenges or uh, this conflict between human conflict in Amboseli National Park, we have to bring awareness or uh, conservation awareness, uh, conservation program, we have to make conservation program, conservation, uh, we have to do uh, conservation education centers, we have to have that knowledge, we have to bring awareness to the community so that they can know that this thing is uh, real and how are they going to, to tackle those, uh, those uh, challenges or uh, that conflict. And then the other thing is, in, a, in another slide, wildlife conservation strategy is community fencing and community conservation centers. Uh, in, in some parts, if you want to reduce the, these things, you have to do uh, community fencing. In some places, we have some places which has uh, uh, agricultural land in, in other parts of, uh, of uh, Loitoktok. If you go to Upper Belt, there is a places for, for cultivation. So if you want to, to deal with this, you have to do fencing. Community conservation centers. And nowadays people have started to make some conservation centers which uh, will uh, help in uh, conserving uh, wildlife. Community participation. In community participation, you have to do education programs to bring awareness or capacity building so that they can uh, understand uh, the importance of uh, livestock uh, and, uh, to, and the importance of wild animals in general. Uh, conservation training centers or training you have uh, to train uh, the, the, the local people, the advantages of uh, wild animals, and how they can uh, work together. The other thing is you have to do extension services, teaching on conservation report of, you have to also to do a report. Like, um, if you go to those places, sometimes you meet an, uh, let's say an elephant, uh, kill a human being or attack, let's say, or kill a cow. You have to have that inventory or that record that uh, how many hyenas have. Uh, I, I think my friends which are here he knows that uh, if you track, you have a track record of those things, definitely you will succeed. And then uh, conservation policies of wildlife conservation. This is work with Kenya Wildlife Services or other uh, NGOs, uh, we have some NGOs like uh, AWF, that's why uh, Africa Wildlife Conservation, we have IFO International, we have ACC. Uh, if they work with the community and uh, if they just uh, work alone, they cannot succeed, but they have to work with the community. And I think these things will explain a lot. And the other thing is in uh, reduce human wildlife conflict, uh, you have to do reduce crop damages. If you do these things, like fencing, uh, you do, okay, it can reduce both wildlife and livestock because sometimes uh, during the dry season, uh, cows will go to the swamp near Amboseli National Park and then if they feed there because of uh, sometimes there's no uh, enough grass, so there is a fight between uh, cows and, uh, and, 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 and other, and uh, you know the masses with livestock, they love livestock a lot. So sometimes they have that issue. Uh, the other thing is a reduction of diseases. Uh, you know, we have many kinds of diseases which caused by wildlife. We live in a place whereby we have wildlife and then we have cows. Like uh, this, for uh, for example, like uh, rinderpest. Rinderpest is caused by uh, wild bees. So uh, you, we have to have 
uh, our cows need to be vaccinated uh, each and every time. And this is going to be done by uh, well wishers to help uh, the community and also those uh, NGOs which are there, plus the, the plus KWS to help the livestock. This will reduce a human and wildlife conflict. Another slide. Uh, these are the common solution for human wildlife conflict. This one, you can do unite effort, uh, land use planning, community-based natural resource management, compensation, or insurance. If there is no any compensation, definitely, you know, you know people will, okay, want to, like for instance, if your livestock uh, have to be attacked by, let's say, a hyena or a lion, and you cannot get any compensation, sometimes uh, Maasai warriors will be uh, very unhappy, and then they take that initiative uh, to fight back with the livestock, and then that you will not protect or you cannot solve that issue. And then a payment for environmental services, uh, wildlife uh, friendly products, field based solution. We have to find uh, solutions uh, in the field, like compensation, like uh, also uh, employing the local people uh, with, uh, within those hotels or within the Kenya Wildlife Service or within the KWS or within those NGOs which are there, then the community will feel that the, also they are benefiting from wild animals. Another slide. Thank you. So, uh, thank you very much, and uh, I wish you all the best. All the best. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joseph. Oh, there's a lot of knowledge within the going on in your own environment. And now I would like to invite someone from a faraway country, Mr. Vasi Malai, director and founder of the Dan Foundation. He made all that trip here to support us, to tell us a bit about what they are doing there, the Dan Foundation. Uh, nearly around 300,000 grassroots leaders are really trained, and they are really managing this affairs. Next. These are our programs. We do a community banking, which means the banks are like a wholesaler. Our self-help group is the retailer. So that likewise, they really take a bank loan, and they also save, and their own money also they lend it, so that whatever the livelihood activities, they get a money there. Uh, then we have a small-scale water bodies. So we walk around a river-based, watershed-based activities in a scale. Uh, we also work on the food system on small millets, uh, small millets cultivation and also the processing and um, uh, consumption. Primarily we work on rain-fed agriculture, probably more than 3 lakh, 300,000 farmers. Then we also work with the local management. In India there are three federal, provincial and uh, they call it as a panchayat, local management. So we work with them to democratize at local level. Then we also work with ICT for poor to really bridge the gap. We run a development graduate school at a national level so that we create people for development professional. Uh, always we do a four generation concept. Whenever we do, that's what I said, 10 years minimum. First is social intermediation followed by financial intermediation for sustainability, then livelihood intermediation. The people, poor people do three or four activities initially, then they really narrow down to one or two. Then uh, civic intermediation, it's a health and education. These are the four uh, in generation concept. Uh, we want to share our experiences, our 20 plus years experiences widely. So, we are joining hands for this piloting, for hand-holding for them. Then um, the next phase of scaling up also, uh, initially here, then Asia. Next. Next. Uh, what's the way forward? I think this is a community first community center. 
community ownership and professional management. This is our model. Then uh, self-sustainability. After five years, it has to be on its own. Then they have to have a self-growth. It is not, we really now run 400 uh, federations, which again, this year, 25 new federations without external help. They themselves promote as a part of self-growth. Uh, so it, it has to set up a new way of working, not always depending upon the external fund. So we should be a self-sufficient organization. Uh, that's what this new project also will take a lead on this kind of uh, aspects. Thank you so much. Thank you, Vasi. I just want to uh, allow Toribio to say a few words because he's been so instrumental behind many of these uh, innovations and developments. Asante Sana, Mr. Abadisavagioni. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Mimi Naito at Toribio, Kotoka, Peru. Sisi, Fia. Hapo Tanzania kuanza maradi ilfumbili kumi na tano mimi utafiti mwa kamoya ilfumbili kumi na sita kuanza maradi pacha mama raimi pacha mama raimi Tanzania kwa mwa kama mwili ah sorry he is from Peru and he has started the project that his colleague was talking about. Papa Chamana uh, in Tanzania uh, in 2015, and for the last two years. Uh, from Bili Komina Sita Kwanza Mradi Kweli Kwanza ya ya Wanakijiji, Wanakijiji Sarami Bili Mavita to Mradi Mbili. Baadae from Bili Komina Saba Kwanza Mradi Mbili Tena. Uh, the actual project started in 2016, where he started two projects in two different community areas. Uh, and in 2017, he also started other two projects in two different community areas. Leo, kuna mimi, mimi kasi hapo, kuna kila familia asilimia samanini, kiyi ningini, kiyi ningini asilimia sitina bili, sitina tato, au sabini unamiti mat, unamiti ya mbao ka, kama fai, kama faida ya baadaye ya familia alafu ya sasa matunda kila familia uh, he, he says that uh, there is a percentage of uh, the involvement that is really done uh, like 63 64 to 70% in, in those uh, 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 community areas that he's working on, and more so focusing on tree planting. Greening Africa, in Aito Greening Africa, in Ayamradi Greening Africa. The name of the uh, organization is called Green Africa. Sisi apana kubaki kama sirika ningini miaka isirini miaka talasini. Sisi kubaki miaka mitato na nuso tu. Um, he says that uh, they have not worked like other organizations that he has heard of, which have been in place or in practice for 30, 35 years. For them, they are already, they are only three years old now. Miaka mitato tayari kondoa umaskini, kopanda miti, kopanda malisho, kopanda matunda, kovoresha miumba, kila kitu. And for the three years, he can attest that they have been able to eradicate poverty through uh, tree planting, planting uh, trees for fruits, uh, for fodder, and also training communities on um, in, uh, development or construction of improved housing. Sasa ya tayari mwaka miaka mitato na nusu kuacha bilima mitato na sarame desemba kuacha i baadai wana kiji kuendisha maradi yaki indelebo sisi kuyua mimi kasi kimataifa Peru Bolivia Brazil kuyua binu ya pachama marai ni um he says uh, for the for these three years they are comfortable that um, now the community can uh, do the initiative, continue, perpetuate the work without the involvement, 
uh, because he is an international um, uh, player where he does a lot of work in Peru, Bolivia, and, and the rest of the world. So he believes that he can leave the community at a better position to do the initiative without him. Sisi kubadilisha mawaso ya watu, mawaso ya wanakijiji. Kama wewe hapana kubadilisha mawaso, hapana hakuna mandeleo ya mradi. Um, he says that uh, the most uh, vital thing or the impact that um, they try to bring to people is a mindset change. Because he believes without uh, having a mindset change to, towards development and towards uh, improvement of livelihood, then there's nothing you're doing. The project will just die. Na radhi yeto ya magugu, sasa hili mifano ya Tanzania, wote nakuya sirika ningini, sirika ningini, kila muisi nakuya kuangalia maradi. Kama sisi kotikelesa maradi. Now for a bigger clap. He, <laughs> he says that uh, they are now a better example in Tanzania. That uh, organizations and um, different plat uh, groups of people come to uh, see and learn from them. Now it's, uh, they are sharing information across the, the, the Republic of Tanzania. Asante sana ya kunamuda. Asante sana. Uh, yeah, he says that uh, even universities and um, institutions of learning, they do come to get knowledge from them. As he concludes, I have to congratulate him. In fact, the Swahili he does and he's from Peru is good. <laughs> thank you. 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 Well, it's a whole array of different aspects of how you look at the work and some who have already done it and experienced from India where the Green River project is similar to this and that's running for a year and uh, many, many years of experience with Toribio working in Peru and now here on the African continent. Uh, well, it's time for you to, to listen to all this and absorb it if there is anything uh, uh, you have to say or to give back or to take, uh, please let me know. It's yours now. Anybody have questions you want to have answered or comments you have to make or uh, advice you have to give? Uh, it's all yours. Yes. Okay. My name is Zachary Makanya. I work for Peram Kenya. Now, first of all, I wanted to say that uh, I'm very, I know Frank Enkman, and there are some things I want to tell you about him because people don't like talking about themselves. This man is very passionate about working with the people. Um, he's a down to earth person. He likes, you know, the, I don't know whether you know, you know the song of development, which we used to sing many years ago. It says, go to the people. For you to have meaningful development, uh, we used to say, go to the people, live among them. Because sometimes people come, they, they, they are away from the people they are working with, then you assume you, are, you know the problems of the people. But him is an example who goes to people to live among them. Go to the people, live among them. In fact, he says, go to the peasant people, live with the peasant people, learn from the peasant people, build on what the peasant people are doing so that they can move on. So I think I've seen an example of a person who, who uses that, the principles in that song. Go to the peasant people, live with them, uh, learn from them, then build on what they are doing. So that whatever is done, it is not from outside, it is you are just developing the capacity from the within. The other thing I wanted to tell the, these community members here, I met them last evening and I want to say that I'm very, very proud of you people because uh, here is an example. I did, when I met you, I didn't know about all this project, but I was watching. But here is an example of people who are proud about their work. People are not bearers. People are not waiting for handouts, but people who are also willing to work with their hands so that they can change their lives. And for me, uh, I don't know if, and if there is a way, my, the people in my village, 
they can go to this place so that they can see what you people are doing so that they can also borrow from you. I think you are an example of a community that uh, we in Kenya should be proud of because of what you are doing. And uh, I also like the Tanzanian approach, the way people are coming from all over the place. Let me tell you, the Bible talks of if you have light, uh, you put it somewhere where people can see it. So for you guys, you are like a lamp, a lamp up there. So keep making sure that that lamp is burning so that people can travel from wherever to come and learn from you. So that, uh, uh, so that people can also be able to learn from you. They can be able to get very good example. Uh, from, and that's the only way we can develop uh, Kenya. That's the only way you can develop the world. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary. Anybody else questions, comments? Okay, you have a mic. Thank you very much, everyone, for your presentations. It's quite inspiring, uh, the work that you've achieved in such a short period of time. I'm just wondering what is so significantly different about your approach, because we have so many NGOs and organizations who have been working in Kenya, particularly there are too many NGOs, if you ask me, who've been working for 20 years, 30 years, 40 even, but I feel like the more NGOs there are, the more poverty gets entrenched. But <laughs> so what is uh, significantly different about your approach as compared to other NGOs that have been entrenched in the Kenyan space in particular for such a long time? Thank you. Can I uh, pass the mic on or if somebody else want to say, comment, give something back? Go ahead. Uh, mine is to thank you once again, as my colleague have said, there are so many NGOs, they are doing nothing for us, and uh, we think it's the right time that we engage with you to work for our people, not against our people. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody want to answer? This question of our panel. Sorry? In English? Anybody who speaks English, you want to translate for me? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to Kuna mashirika mengi ya siwa sarikari na wanafanya kazi na communities, lakini nuangalia maadi wanafanya kazi watu wanaendelea kuwa maskini. Lakini hii mradi wenu inaonekana kama mnaendelea kuinuka umaskini mnafukuza. Tofauti ile iko katika hii mradi ni tofauti gani? Ni ni, ni mnafanya haya mashirika yengine ya siwa serikali hawafanyi. So hao watu wanataka kujua siri what is siri yenu ni gani? Siri ya vile mnafanya ndio nyinyi wenyewe mnaendelea lakini mashirika zengine ya siasa ya serikali yakija watu wanaendelea kuwa maskini. Asante sana. Naitwa Sia Pesankale. Ningependa kujibu hiyo kwamba hii project fenye huwa wanafanya they don't employ people. Wanakuja kwa shamba lako alafu unaekewa kazi ujifanyie ili ujiendeleze mwenyewe. So kama ni maji, utaekewa maji, kama ni mimea utapatiwa hizo miti uoteshe na hiyo project itakuwa ni yako ya kujiendeleza we na familia yako. So wanafanya hiyo kazi kwa familia kama kila familia iko na hiyo. So apart from they create employment to some few people is like Everybody will be employed because you will be put in the farm and you are going to work for your own benefit. And it's like everyone in the village will benefit from the project. So it's not individual. Everybody will participate. <laughs> Thank you, Sia. Leo. Yeah, there's just one more thing that I want to add about the secret of that project. Only women can subscribe, and that works. Contento. Sander, go ahead, you have a mic. 
Um, I saw an excellent presentation on um, human-wildlife conflicts and, and a very interesting presentation as well on the fodder trees. Um, how do you want to combine the two? Aren't you afraid that if you introduce fodder trees that will might enhance the human-wildlife conflict since it might attract elephants who then do damage to the, to the farms or even to the houses and, 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 and the people? Good question. Maybe you can translate in Swahili. Did you hear? No, I can, well, maybe you can. Okay. We've, severally, we have been asked those questions by the KWS, that's Wildlife Service, and what we do, we sat down with them because they were, at first they were against with the project, but suppose, to avoid the conflict. We, can, we cannot go fencing all the places, but we can grow trees that the elephants and other, other wildlife, they cannot feed on those trees. Another thing, suppose during the rain season, we Maasai people, because the most, the, the most trees that we're going to plant is for the fodder bank for our animals. During the rain season, we grow those trees. The elephant cannot, cannot they, can ju they just destroy. So during the rain season, we, we harvest them and we preserve for future use. And during the drought season, we can live for the elephant to eat. Another thing, the we can grow the trees that the elephant, they cannot feed on them. Maybe Joseph, you want to uh, answer his question? It was, yeah, answer it, okay, good. Yes. You can also grow many trees. Elef we live in the elephant, so elephant to have some, and we have some. And sometimes, elephant disturb when there is drought, and now we have the technique. In the rain time, they don't destroy, because they don't even come there most of the time. So, you plant in the rain time, you harvest, you preserve it. In the dry, they just go, but they, nothing they will eat. And you plant more. Right now you plant for the elephant, you plant for the animals. You balance it. It's interesting. Good question, Sandra, because every village we visited, and we sat under the tree right there, and we talked, and the question always came up. This question came up in every village. So what are you going to do about the elephants? And I said, I don't know. I don't live here. What do you do about it? And there came a lot of answers, actually, uh, on what they could do. One thing we came up with was, it's more a sense, I said, the relationship with the elephants used to be very good with the Maasai people. And the relationship seems disturbed now. And I was thinking, and I was saying out loud, uh, maybe we should grow also for the trees for the elephants. And they took that seriously. Yes, we should. It's more of the intention that the relation, we need to restore the relationship with the elephants. The elephants have a huge memory and they've been targeted by many people over the last years and they've been slaughtered in terrible ways and they have that memory. They remember and they know and their offspring knows. So we humans and the people who live closest with them are the Maasai and other tribal people they have a hard time, and they are restoring the relationship with the elephants. Uh, Leo, you told about the secret of uh, only if the women can subscribe. Um, what kind of effect does that have on the community? Uh, I was really touched by the introduction that you gave us on, you know, women and men are equal, uh, but I don't know, at least in my country, that's not always perceived that way. So uh, I was just wondering, well, what effect does that have? Is everybody happy? with that idea or are there also people that have problems with it? Uh, how does it work out? So, you mean the, the fact that women subscribe, what does that, what, what does that lead to? Are you referring to, to uh, 
to his introduction when yeah yeah when you gave the introduction and 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 you, you talked about you know um, Well, the first thing that I said was that I was touched by the introduction about uh, men and women being equal and that the secret of the project is that only women can subscribe. So I was wondering what effect that has in the communities and in the way that the project develops. Okay. Ana Uliza, unajua inaonekana hii project wanawake wamepatua umuhimu sana na ndao wanaongoza hii mrandi lakini anauliza na wanaume wanasema nini wanaume wanafuraha ama wana furaha because kuna sehemu zingine ukiona wanawake wana take read wanaume pia wanakuwa na shida lakini nyinyi inaonekana vile mnafanya watu wamekubali hiyo project so eh yenu ni nini hao wanawake wanaume wanachukua hii mradi namna gani kwa Tanzania kwa sababu tulipata seminar ya kuhusiana na pachimaremi in Tanzania because they got training kwa hiyo sisi kama wanaume hatuna shaka tu pamoja so like men because they got the training they have no problem with that tunafanya kazi pamoja kuboresha kaya they work together so that they work can they can do well isipokuwa siku ya sherehe za pachimaremi wanawake huwa wapewa kipao mbele na ndio hutunikiwa zawadi uh, what they have noticed is that when people are getting awards it is the women who get awards because they are the most active they are the ones who get the, the awards they are the ones who are awarded wanachukua zawadi pamoja na kutunukiwa vyeti kwa hiyo hakuna shida kabisa they are given uh, and give, they are given awards they are also given certificates wala tujisikii vibaya wanaume and i think the men probably is because of uh, because they have been trained the men have no problem i'm looking at the time i think we really almost come to end we should come to a closure and uh, mother matui could you come and maybe uh, help us to sing the last song of a blessing to everyone I thank you very much uh, Asante sana ndugu yangu kutoka Peru. He is uh, thanking the man sana. from Peru. Na kushukuru sana kwa hiyo kazi umefanya upande wa Tanzania. He is thanking for the work he is doing in Tanzania. Na hiyo kujitolea mpaka ume, ume kwa muda mfupi umefanya kazi kubwa. And the way you have volunteered you have worked so hard so that Mbaye, within a short time the, the impact is high. Ambaye kwa kwa uh, mashirika zingine zingechukua muda wa miaka nyingi sana. For other organizations this one takes a long time. Kwa hivyo tunakushukuru kwa hiyo. Uh, so is thanking you very much for your sacrifices. Upande mwingine uh, wao wanaita pacha mama. Pacha mama na washukuru sana. He is also thanking the women kwa hiyo mradi mmeanza upande wa Kajiado because of the project you have started in Kajiado naelewa hiyo area kabisa vile ipo. He understands that area very well. Na pale sasa wanaweza kupata maji. Eh? Vile nimeona hapo muna mumeweka mradi wa maji. He says that there he says that you have a water project. Na mkafundisha watu mambo ya kilimo. And then you have trained people on how to do agriculture. Sasa hata mifugo wanafuga ki, kiasi sio ile eh, ya kuachilia. Even the animals as seems the livestock you are not keeping very many you are just also doing it in moderately. Hiyo ni maendeleo kubwa sana. That is a huge development. Na tena hapo sasa mmepunguza umaskini pale. In fact you have also changed away poverty from yourselves. Sababu mbeleni hapo hapakuwa na maji kabisa. Because in the past there was no water hata ya kunywa. Even for to drink. So hiyo tunakushukuru kwa hiyo pacha mama. So we thank you the the readers from the Kajiando project because of what you are doing. Kwa hivyo kitu ya kwanza nime ya mwisho ni kwamba the last thing kwa hiyo mradi yenu kitu moja ningeomba mu, muongeze pale. In that project he is requesting that you can do extra an extra thing sababu sijaona mkiuzisha vijana wa wachanga watoto wa shule ya chekechea. So, he is saying he has not seen you involving the young children school children 
waelewe kazi hiyo ambayo mnafanya so that they understand also what you are doing ili wakiele wake wakiwa waki, waki wakubwa because when they grow up nyinyi mtakuwa wazee wote you all be old na hao ndio watachukua nafasi hii and then they are the ones who are, take, who are going to take over the leadership from you so mkiwafundisha kwa wakati wakiwa wadogo so it's good if you start training them when they are very young kazi itaendelea katika hiyo area yote Tanzania na Kenya pamoja so that the work can continue and then they are then going to take on the leadership so naomba muweke hiyo mradi kwa mashule ya chekechea so he is requesting that this project can be extended to schools primary schools and secondary schools ndio muendelee kabisa na mradi ifike kule mwisho kule amujawahi kufika pia so that you can do more and you can achieve more asante ni sana thank you very much in a second in a second yeah. asante e igri ni afrika wao pachamama raimi tafauti kabisa ya mradi nyingine mradi ya kawaida sisi kasi na wakiji sisi kasi na wanakiji yote kushiriki asilimia sitini asilimia samanini kushiriki kasi buri hapana sisi kulipa hela sino kuchukua miti ya hii kamara ya kwaki sisi kama shule kutengeneza kitalo kubwa hapo kufundisha mimi kufundisha watu nyingine wanakuja Peru kufundisha Uh, he is saying that this project is a bit different because they like working with the communities and uh, it is the communities who are taking the lead they also don't pay people to do their work people doing their work voluntarily garama corona garama kuba sisi kununua biriba plastic sisi kotengenisa kununua hi neti wao kasi yote Yevolea, kweka odongo kila kitu yeye kutengeneza nyumba yake mama na mototo na the baba do, the project does very little about 80% but most of the work most of the efforts they are done by the local people they are the ones who do the hard the hard work they are the ones who take care of the projects so i think the project just gives a small input like seed but then the people are the ones who are doing the work themselves alafu kasi hapana corona hii tu sino kwa ika sheria ya kijiji ya kuya kuya mkutano andika hapana mtu hapo pombe hapana piga mama hapana faini ya kama hapana usafi faini piga na yes also katika kijiji they have they have also rules they have many rules which are very strict and they must be followed for example you are not supposed to come to a meeting when you are drunk you are not supposed to beat your wife if you beat your wife that issue is being is will be reported and then you will be you will be punished uh, you you also the question to make sure that the village is very clean you don't just throw things away like that so they have also rules self governing rules which help them to manage Asante sana. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, this is the Latin passion for the work. Eh? So maybe you will never stop. <laughs> uh, I just want to say before we do our end ceremony and our prayer, our blessing, that of course, yes, we are inviting all initiatives and all other people who are working on this huge landscape to uh, participate and come forward because this is uh, this needs an unprecedented collaboration something we humans have never done before but these are the heroes and the heroines that start so maybe we can all stand up and uh, we can do our last prayer Thank you very much.